Lee Porter was never the kind of girl to let anything get her down. Why don't you just tell me about Lee? She was funny. She was our family clown. From the day she was born. She, even as a child, used to make up little skits and funny little shows to put on in front of people. And growing up in Pueblo, Colorado, Lee and her big brother Max were more than siblings. They were best friends. We've always had the same kind of close knit of friends. So unlike other brothers and sisters, we're pretty close and we hung out all the time. Max had always been Lee's hero. Yeah, I say that she just had loved and admired her brother. She did everything that her brother did. So after Max went off to college in the little town of Trinidad, Lee went there too to study massage therapy just like him. At first, everything was great. But Lee suddenly changed after her brother graduated and moved to California, and she broke up with her boyfriend. She started becoming very depressed. Which surprised and worried her mom, Renee. She always impressed me. She would let things slide, you know, when they would maybe destroy one person. She got through it amazingly well. But not this time. I didn't know what was going on with her, and I told her, Lee, I'm scared for you. I'm scared that you're going through something that you're not telling me, and I don't know how to help you. Renee got so frustrated, she asked Lee to leave her house during one visit. That was the last time I saw her. So you wish instead of telling her to leave that night that you would have put your arms around her? I do. I do. I have a hard time forgiving myself for that. Mom wouldn't learn until later that her daughter had started using heroin, a secret Lee had confided to Brother Max. Yeah, and I freaked out when she told me. Like, why are you doing that to yourself? The troubled teen then chose to drop out of college and move somewhere new. Lee's world had suddenly fallen apart, so she decided to start over right here in Denver, where an old high school friend named Christopher Wade had offered her a place to stay and find solace. But it would not turn out the way Lee had expected. I knew there was something really bad happening because for her to even ask for help, she must have been having such a hard time. That's not someone she would normally turn to. Max and Lee both knew Wade from high school, and he had reconnected with Lee on Facebook several months earlier. I looked at all of her posts, so I started noticing that Christopher Wade starting hitting the like button and commenting on her posts. They also began communicating by text and phone. Wade also said he would act as her accountability buddy to help her beat her heroin habit. It sounds like Christopher Wade was kind of a knight in shining armor for her. That's how he made it seem to Lee. But Wade wouldn't be able to save this damsel in distress. When did you first suspect something was wrong? It was hard for me to get a hold of her. I eventually started feeling there was something wrong when two days went by. 19-year-old Lee Porter had just quit college and left the little Colorado town of Trinidad to make a new start in Denver. She had her whole car stuffed with the items from her dorm. Of old high school friend Christopher Wade, a 23-year-old criminal justice student and offered to help her beat a heroin habit. She texted me and she told me that she loved me and that she hoped that I was doing okay and that she was trying to get her life together. And that was the last time I ever communicated with her. And I texted her back and I told her I loved her. Lee didn't respond to any more phone messages or texts from mom Renee or big brother Max. How many times did you call, text? I probably called her over 20 times easily, if not more than that. Probably the same amount of text too. I got a phone call from my son and he was frantic. And he said, Mom, I have been trying to get a hold of Lee. She won't respond. I was like, okay, something is seriously wrong. When they hadn't heard from Lee for two days, Mom called Christopher Wade, who told her she had left the same day she arrived. She had gotten a message late that night, and the next thing he saw was her getting into a white truck. 
The family then reported Lee missing to Westminster police. And Wade told them the same story, with more details about what had happened before she left in the white truck. They had gone to Boss Market, had a bite to eat, and they came back to his apartment, talked and played video games. Wade said Lee left shortly after, but police would find her car packed with her belongings, still in his apartment complex parking lot. We weren't very super surprised that, to find it because Chris admitted that she drove to his house. I mean, we processed it for blood and, and everything, but we didn't really find anything. Security video from that Boston market would later confirm at least part of Wade's story, that he and Lee did indeed go to Boston Market, and Wade was happy to allow police to search his apartment without a warrant. To see if there's any obvious signs of, of a struggle or anything like that. Wade seemed to be cooperating with the police. He even led the search to find his young friend, placing numerous items about her disappearance on his Facebook page, including missing posters seeking any information on her whereabouts. Wade also gave an interview to a local TV station. Where he's talking about how he hopes that Lee comes back safe and he really wants the best for her. And Wade posted Facebook messages pleading with Lee to let him and her family know she was safe and alive. One reading, please Lee, come back to us. But Lee's brother Max knew the dark side of Wade, hearing some disturbing stories about Wade's sick fantasies when they were in high school together. What had you heard about him? I heard that he was writing a journal about capturing girls and keeping them as sex slaves. Now with Lee missing, Max and his mom were afraid that Wade might have done something horrible to her. The people that went to school with him said that he was creepy. They said that several of them had turned him into school administrators because he was writing things about murdering and raping and hiding bodies and drawing pictures of cemeteries. The police also discovered that Wade had been discharged from the army for mental illness after telling military psychiatrists he had tried to kidnap, rape, and murder a teenage girl when he was in high school. The psych report says, quote, he claims he entered the girl's home near midnight through an open back door, armed with two knives, walked down a hallway towards the girl's bedroom. The girl's sister appeared in the hallway, causing him to leave the house before he was discovered, unquote. He's had these violent fantasies combined with sexual fantasies for a long time. In my mind, that makes kind of a dangerous combination. And a second police search of Wade's apartment uncovered more disturbing secrets. When we were checking his web browser, like on his iPad, he has this bondage porn on there and uh, search terms for um, child pornography. Then there was the underwear. We actually found a large duffel bag in his closet. So I asked him to dump it out and it was full of size 14 women's Hanes panties. And he explained that those were actually his and that he felt more comfortable in those. Cops also found a lot of blood in the apartment. He poured bleach in several spots. We were able to actually get DNA samples and blood from the outside of those bleach spots. And then on his mattress, we found several large pools of blood mixed with bleach. They couldn't match the blood to Lee unless they found her body, but they felt they had their man. So we started kind of focusing a little bit more on Chris Wade. Then police had hope of finding Lee when investigators learned her cell phone was emitting signals from the vicinity of a local landfill. We moved about 50,000 tons of debris. When police discovered Lee Porter's cell phone was emitting signals from a local landfill, they questioned Christopher Wade for a third time. The detective asked him, well, Chris, is there any chance that Lee is in the landfill? Chris took this big sigh and and he just started almost crying, and he said, uh, I've been having dreams that Lee was found in a landfill. And then he asked for an attorney at that point. So that interview ended right there. An excavation began at the landfill, where authorities would move 50,000 tons of trash, debris, and dirt looking for Lee's body. All the officers of the department basically went to 12 hour shifts, and we had 20 plus officers out there at any given time six days a week, 10 hours a day. Police scoured this landfill and they found all of Lee's personal belongings, including her wallet, cell phone, clothing, even her jewelry. The only thing they could not find was Lee. 
you described your heart dropping. You know, I haven't felt that a lot in my life. I felt she was gone. Lee's family and the cops were sure Christopher Wade had killed Lee. But without a body, it was going to be hard to prove in court. In all nobody homicides, it's easy to put a little bit of doubt into a juror's mind that what's the chances that Lee walks back through that door? Then what? Are you going to convict this guy of murder without ever seeing the body? So they're tough cases. What police didn't know was that Lee's brother Max had been working the case on his own since flying into Denver soon after she disappeared and was befriending Wade on the phone. So I started making him think that he could trust me. I started making him believe that he was helping us look for her is what I did. And it worked. I've completely gained his trust because he is totally welcome for me to come up and see him. They ended up going to this park where Max and three friends sat down at a table with Wade. He was going to do a tarot card reading for us to kind of get some answers. And Max secretly recorded everything that was said on his cell phone, starting with the tarot card reading. Air, earth, fire, water, spirit, pentacles. At this point, I know he killed her. How? I just know. I just feel it. I know he did. She's gone in the way he's acting. Finally, Max confronts Wade, point blank. You need to tell us right now, dude. I'm telling him, I know you know, I know you know. I need my sister back, dude. I'm gonna kill myself without my sister. And then eventually he breaks down. He's like, okay, yeah, I know. If you did something really, really bad, I will forgive you, I just need to know. Okay, I know you guys are probably not going to believe a word of this. In this recorded confession released for the first time, Wade admits he killed Lee, saying she tried to stab him with a knife when he refused to get her drugs after they'd had sex. She was thrusting at my belly. I sidestepped the first, then she thrust again. I turned, grabbed her, stepped forward and twisted her around so that her body was in between me and the knife. And then I placed my hand at her throat. I didn't start squeezing until after she kept going. I said, we can end this right now. I won't say anything to anyone. Just please drop the knife and you can get dressed. You can leave and go wherever. Then she said that she would stop when either she was dead or if I agreed to buy her drugs. She used both of her arms to push against me with the knife, trying to cut my arm to get me to let go so she could keep attacking. So I started squeezing on her throat. I thought that her muscles would relax when she went unconscious and that I could gradually move the knife away and let her go and let her regain consciousness. But that didn't happen. She kept on fighting and fighting. She was still pushing against my hand. Then it was like a rubber band snapped and she just went completely lax. It took me completely by surprise and I ended up cutting her and I dropped her. I checked the pulse and didn't find anything. Then I laid her on my bed and covered her in a blanket. I went and got some of the trash bags from the kitchen. Where'd you put her body? Where's your body? I'll get to that. Just please okay. let okay. me finish from. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I put a bag over her head and then I placed two on top of her. I had used some rags to clean up the blood and I put those into a grocery bag and I put that into the duffel bag with her. I did the only thing I could think of and God help me, I put her in the dumpster. Is that all? You didn't rape her? No. Because I know I you, did not. you wanted to rape somebody when you were in high school, I know. Yeah, when I was in high school. I know you won't believe me, but I will be turning myself into the police. No, you're going to jail right now. You think I'm just going to let you walk away and drive away? You killed my damn sister. Get my phone. It has all this recorded. Call the cops. How did you feel? I freaked out and I jumped over the table and I 
started attacking him. And uh, my friend tore me off of him. And Wade called 911 himself. 911? Uh, yes, I'd like to confess to a murder. Okay. What happened? I would rather leave that to them when they get here. At the same time, Max called his mom, Renee, while she was driving on the freeway. And he was hysterical. And he said, Mom Lee's dead. Christopher killed her. And Renee, herself hysterical, also called 911. Oh my God! Ma'am, what's happening? Oh my God! Ma'am, can you take a deep breath? God, my baby, my little baby. What are you calling about? That guy just admitted he killed my daughter. And who killed her? Christopher Wade. Christopher Wade just admitted he killed her. Wade had already been arrested at the park and would later repeat his confession to police, who credit Max with cracking the case. Getting a confession from Chris is, is huge. We don't recommend that people go about it that way because it's pretty dangerous to do that, but it was great for the case. That's not how typically we solve criminal cases, um, but that certainly was a factor in solving this one. I was so proud of my son. There's a really good chance he'd still be walking around if we didn't do that work. Instead, Wade will spend 48 years behind bars after pleading guilty to second degree murder and sexual exploitation of a child for the images found on his computer. And if he does get out, uh, he's gonna be a very old man. Neither the cops nor Lee's family believed Wade's claim that she tried to stab him and that he killed her in self-defense. This was a cold, calculated murder. I believe that he lured her there to kill her. Nor do Renee and Max believe his story, that he disposed of Lee's body in the same dumpster that he put her belongings. I don't believe she's in the landfill. And they won't be satisfied until her body is found. I want her found more than anything else in this world. I would give up my own life to find her right now. She needs to come home with us. She needs to be somewhere near her family. So Lee Porter can rest in peace.